not even my closest friends know. I know that I shouldn't really care about what Facebook comments and YouTube comments say. But I feel very shameful. I'm Mexican. I'm double majoring. I'm going to graduate magna cum laude. I didn't take out any loans either. I, I worked since I was 16. I can't hide it for the rest of my life. Right about 17, 18, that's when I got into Harvard. I received my acceptance letter. I left out the door and I tripped uh, on some cable there. It actually knocked down my computer. But I ran all the way to school to show them, you know, the email that I had just got. And that was the first problem there. A thing that drives me is when people ask me, so, what's your major? Yeah. Mathematics and statistics. Ooh, good luck with that. That looks confusing, but it's really not. So I went and I asked her, I was like, Mom, do you have my social security number? And she was like, you don't have a social security number. So I was like, wait, what? So how am I in school? And she was like, um, when I enrolled you in school originally, they didn't ask for a social security number. They just asked for your basic information and your birth certificate. And I was like, wow, I don't have a social security number. That means I'm undocumented. A lot of these kids had no choice about whether they would come here. They found themselves in the United States at the age of two or three. The only country they know is our country. I came when I was about five. They did not take that first step. They did not decide to come to this country. How does a five-year-old get held responsible for a criminal act? When a student like that walks into your office and she says to you, so how do I get my driver's license, sir? And you have to be the one that says, man, I really have to tell you, there's no way that you can get your driver's license right now. And if you're driving down the street and you get pulled over, you could find yourself in a deportation hearing. As a counselor, that is the hardest conversation to have with a student, that she can't get a driver's license to go to work, that when she gets to go to work, um, she has to admit that she's undocumented. I missed the stop sign, and there happened to be a cop coming my way when I ran it, and he immediately turned around and stopped me. And that's where everything started. It was weird. I, I didn't feel myself fitting into the crowd. When they would ask me, what are you in for? I'm like, um, I had two traffic tickets. I was well behaved. Uh, I'd never been in any trouble. And that was my darkest hour, just being taken away and, you know, just the shame of being in handcuffs. I was arrested and even though I was innocent, I was transferred to an immigration facility and I was there for 45 days. The only thing I could see was a little TV outside of my cell. I just wanted to sleep. That's all I wanted to do. Like, I would wake up for breakfast, grab the food, give it away, and, and go back to sleep. Me being like in the whole orange jumpsuit thing, and to see my mom just on the other side of that glass, it just hurt for her, like, to see her cry and me not be able to hold her and tell her that it was gonna be okay. Like, that, that hurt. My ancestors have been where Mario is right now. This sense of walking in fear and living in fear. If you treat these young people who've lived their whole life, except maybe a year or two, in the United States, and you reject them, and you make them go back to a country they don't know. You take them out of a culture that they love and they contribute to through their education, through being in the service. Well, it's a mystery how a Christian who says, I am a Christian, can be so harsh. What's the great secret in America, huh? The one we all know. We see Maria making our bed as we're getting to the hotel room. We don't give a hoot whether she has paper. She's made our bed, and we're happy she's there. It's shameful. This idea that people are walking around in fear, it just strikes me as, as un-American. It also strikes me as a problem that we should work to find a solution to. The President of the United States can single-handedly make sure that every dream kid in this country has a work permit tomorrow, has a driver's license tomorrow. He can't legalize them, he can't make them permanent residents, but he can give them a work permit. They've gone to school, they've worked hard, they've gone to college. Kids 
who've done everything we've asked of them. Let's give them that chance. This issue really challenges our country to look inside of our hearts. As sad as it is to see a dysfunction around our whole immigration issue, uh, even sadder would be if no one in the rest of the world wanted to come to America. I am so many things, and if people see me walking, if people were to see, you know, all the things that I've done, they would have never thought that I wasn't documented. I grew up in the United States. 16 years I've been here. I do want to stay.